Hey guys, it's Dane here, your interview coach at datingyou.com. So one of the common questions I often get is how do you define the KPI of your experiment? And so this video, hopefully it's gonna explain how you define this. And ultimately it really boils down to what is the goal of your experiment? And when you think about the goal of the experiment, it's really embedded into three different levels. So there's the goal at the business level, product level, and experimentation level. So business level would be more like a uh, mission statement. You know, what is the primary goal that the business is trying to achieve for users? And then within a business, there's multiple products and services. So every single line of product or service that the business is offering has its own goal um, that's more tangible. And then there's the experimentation goal, um, which is that within a product, there's a various experimentations that are happening in order to refine and improve the process uh, for users. And so when you think about these goals, and especially when you're um, answering an A-B testing question, make sure you explain it in terms of these three levels, the business, product, and experimentation. Let's take a look at a concrete example. So. Let's do some breakdown in terms of Apple. You know, what's Apple's mission statement? It's bringing the best user experience to its customer through innovative hardware, software, and services. And within Apple, there are, of course, dozens of products and services, but one of the more popular ones are the iPhone, iPad, Apple Music, and the iPhone, you know, a lot of us have iPhones nowadays, right? So it's a smartphone for contacts, work, notes, and entertainment. iPad, it's an easy to use smart tablet for work, notes, and entertainment. And then there's Apple Music, a streaming service that provides a selection of million songs. So all of these products within Apple are all designed to improve the mission statement, right? To help Apple achieve its goal of bringing the best user experience to its customer through innovative hardware, software, and services. Now, these products are going to go through a series of process in order to help users get better experience over time, which in turn is going to help users purchase Apple products more. So the type of experimentation that may, might run in terms of the iPhone as an example, it could be testing a new facial recognition that allows users to unlock the phone without manually entering the passcode. So this is going to help the iPhone user engagement, right? And then there's the experimentation in terms of iPad. It's a testing a new hand gesture that reduces deletion or undo rate of a task or note. So this also helps improve engagement as well for iPad. And then in terms of the Apple Music, there's launching personalized marketing campaign to acquire new users, which will help spur user growth um, and adoption for Apple Music. So you can see that when you think about a goal, right, it's really embedded within these three levels. And that's something that you definitely want to discuss whenever you get an A-B testing question in an in interview setting. Now, one of the things that you probably want to do is, especially when you're getting ready for an interview, um, the last thing that you want to do is, you know, you don't want to ask the interviewer what this product is, especially if the A-B testing sort of assumes that you already know the product, right? So whenever you have an in interview coming up, make sure you do product breakdown. As an example, if you have an interview coming up for Uber, then you want to go through these seven different questions to have a lot of familiarity with the Uber app because a lot of the product sense, A-B testing, any sort of applied machine learning or stat questions are going to be based on your understanding of how the Uber service works. And that means that you wanna download the app, actually use it, and really deconstruct it in terms of how it works. So there are seven things that you wanna ask. So ask yourself, okay, what is the problem that the product's trying to product solves? Secondly, what are the type of users? Who are the users using the product? What about in terms of the onboarding process? What is the onboarding process of the product? What about the journey? What is a user experience from the beginning to the end of a task? Now, how does it reward the users? Um, and then what about the retention? How does a product retain current users? And growth, how does a product grow users? So these are the seven primary elements of the way in which you wanna break down the product. And they're gonna help you 
resolve these open-ended case type of problems, whether it's in the form of product sense, A-B testing, or any sort of apply stats and machine learning type of questions. Now, once you have an understanding about the product breakdown, um, one other element that you want to know is that when you're trying to define the relevant KPI for an experiment of a particular product, there are three essential elements that you have to know when it comes to defining a metric. And these three elements in order to create a metric are action, unit of analysis, and statistical function. An action is what is the main action you're trying to measure, right? It's in the form of click, view, and post. Oftentimes, as an interview coach, when I do ask a candidate, you know, what is a KPI you're going to use to, let's just say, measure email campaign, they might say clicks. But that alone isn't going to be enough. You also have to think about in terms of the unit of analysis as well. Are we talking about um, clicks per user, clicks per session, clicks per month? And how are we actually applying this statistical function? Are we talking about the count of clicks? Are we talking about the average number of clicks per user? So always make sure that whenever you define a metric for product sense type of questions or A-B experiment, you have to define a metric that embeds these three elements. Now, there are certain frameworks that can be helpful when you're defining the KPI of an experiment, and it could be something like ARG as an example. So ARG stands for the following, acquisition, activation, retention, referral, and revenue. So this is a type of a framework useful in e-commerce. Because when we think about e-commerce, ultimately from the beginning to the end, the end process is a purchase of an item. So think about Amazon.com, an example, right? What does it do to acquire new users? How do customers find Amazon.com? What about the activation, right? So as soon as the user learns about Amazon.com, they have to sign up in order to be able to make a purchase. So how quickly do customers sign up? And what about retention? How long do customers stay active? How often do they come back to the platform in order to make purchases? And what about referrals? How do customers let others know about the product? And then the revenue, how does Amazon increase revenue? So this is a type of funnel metric that could be useful for amazon.com, but also various other apps, applications as well, like Uber Eats as an example. Now there's another type of metric framework that could be useful as well, and that is called HART. So this is a metric framework that was created by Google's UX research team. So it measures uh, five dimensions, the happiness, engagement, acquisition, retention, and task success. So happiness is a measure of satisfaction, and it basically gauges how satisfied and happy are your customers. In terms of engagement, how are customers engaged on your product? In terms of acquisition, how many new visitors are you getting per month? And then there is a retention, what are the daily and monthly active users? And then there are the task success, how long does it take for a user to complete a task? So let's think about Google search as an example, right? When you use Google search, they may often send out surveys as a way to gauge how satisfied are they in the search result and then there's a level of engagement. How frequently does the user come back to Google search in order to use that? And the acquisition, how do new users start using Google search? In terms of engagement on a per session basis, how many searches do they perform? In terms of acquisition, how do they get new users? In terms of retention, how often do they come back to Google search to continue to use it? And then in terms of task success, it's really about the efficiency and the effectiveness of Google search. From the moment that a user provides an intent on what they're looking for, how quickly does the search result come up and then user clicks it? And also, what is the error rate around this, right? There could be some instance where the query doesn't produce any search result. So they're looking for efficiency and effectiveness when it comes to measuring task success. So R is a funnel type of metric. You know, there's a beginning to the end, whereas heart, it's a lot more of 360 overview of a product. And depending on what the interview question is, you're going to have to think about what is a more relevant framework that you could use. And in some cases, you might want to just use a combination of the two in order to address the question at hand. Now, when we think about the metric in the context of A-B testing, one thing I want to emphasize is that it's often embedded within a hierarchy as well. There's the North Star metric, driver metric, guardrail metric, secondary metrics, and segmentation metrics. 
So the North Star metric is a quantitative measure of the mission statement. And then there's a driver metric, which is a lot more of a product metric. And it measures something that's a bit more on the short term. And then there's a set of guardrail metrics in order to make sure that if you were to launch an experiment, it's not harming the other aspects of the business. So let's think about uh, the newsfeed on Facebook as an example. You might have run an experiment in order to improve engagement in terms of the minutes spent per session. However, though, launching this change may mean that it might harm the other aspects that the business may care about. Um, as the advertisement revenue, as an example, that might go down as a consequence of improving engagement. So you always have to consider potential guardrails that you may want to protect before you proceed in launching a change. And then there are the secondary metrics, which provide the other sort of horizontal type of metrics that's not necessarily covered within the driver and guardrail metrics. As example, for the Facebook newsfeed in this case, the driver metric might be the average minutes per user session, whereas the guardrail metric might be the average advertising dollar spent per customer. But the secondary metric may look at the other functionalities of the newsfeed, such as clicks, comments, or even the other type of products that are within that landing page of Facebook, like marketplace, groups, events, and so forth. And that's because sometimes there's a bit of a spillover where if you were to change one functionality, it might cause users to change behaviors in other aspects within this platform. And so that's why it's important to look at secondary metrics as well. And then there are the segmentation, which means that you simply look at these metrics across various segmentations. So you might see an improvement of a particular KPI at the global level. However, though, if you were to break it down at the device level, iOS versus Android, or even at the geographical level, you could look at the North America versus Europe, you will see that because of census paradox, there could be some variance in terms of how users behave. And that might serve as an example for additional A-B experiments later down the road where maybe you want to run an experiment at a per seven basis and then roll out a feature that's relevant that is tailored towards the, uh, the particular group that is seeing positive effect of that change. So let's take our learnings and apply it in this case study. Suppose that Amazon's search team runs an experiment to test a new recommendation algorithm on product search result. What are the North Star, Driver, Guardwell, Secondary, and Segmentation metrics? So let's think about the purpose of Amazon. So it's an e-commerce platform that really empowers merchants and customers to be able to discover any products that they want to purchase. And the best proxy that measures this mission statement will be the total sales per year. So this is the long-term metric that Amazon wants to align, right? All the businesses, the C-suite executives, the investors, at the end of the day, will always care about moving this North Star metric as a way to gauge whether Amazon is on a positive track or not. And then when we think about this experiment in this case, right, what are we trying to run here? So we're trying to improve the recommendation algorithm on the product search result, right? It's like one of the core functionality of the Amazon.com without the proper recommendation algorithm in place, people are simply not going to be able to find the right product. So this A-B test ensures that a new recommendation system um, is designed to increase sales. So we know what the North Star metric is and we know we have a clear understanding of what the A-B testing is. What about in terms of the driver metric? So the driver metric in this case is going to be the average daily sales per user. So notice that the North Star metric and driver metric are similar in a sense that they're measuring the same type of action. The only difference is the unit of analysis and the statistical function, whereas the North Star metric will look at it on a per year, the total basis, right? This really helps the C-suite executives understand at a high level in terms of whether Amazon is in the right direction or not. However, when we're talking about running an A-B experiment, it needs to be short-term proxy uh, for this long-term measure. And so we would want to take a look at something like average daily sales per user. Now, what about in terms of guardrail metrics? So when we talk about guardrail metrics, it will further break down into two different elements. There's the business type of KPIs and then the validity uh, type of metrics for in order to ensure that the A-B testing had no potential issues. So the business type of metrics will include um, orders per day, signups per day, 
refunds per day. Whereas the validity type of metrics will be sample ratio mismatch like SRM, AA test, and the novelty effect. So if you're wondering more about the context of these validity assessment, make sure you check out the AB testing course that was launched on datainu.com. I'll provide a link below. And there are 70 plus video lessons just like this that covers the beginning to the end process of an experiment. They're focused on helping you build the intuition and the application of A-B testing. So I hope to see you in that course. Now, going back to this, we know how we're gonna set the driver metric and the gardener metrics, but what about in terms of the secondary metric? So we'll look at the other sort of horizontal function within the Amazon.com. The things we're gonna care about, the average search counts per user, average cart size per user, uh, average browsing time per user. Changing the recommendation system that would ultimately improve the average daily sales per user could potentially mean that other functionalities may decline or increase depending on what that metric is. And you always want to look at how change of a particular component within the overall product would affect the product as a whole. So secondary metric really provides a 360 degree view of an AB experiment in this case. In terms of segmentation, you could break it down in terms of location, device, browser. So when it comes to location, it'd be the per continent or per country level as an example. When it comes to device, you could look at it in terms of device types like iPhone, Android for browser, it could be Chrome, Internet Explorer, and Firefox. So these are the type of KPIs that you want to address when you're when you're designing an A-B experiment. And it's the type of comprehensive details that interviewers are expecting in, in product data science interviews. So if you want more content like this, make sure you check out dataab.com for one-on-one -on -one mentorship courses and community access. I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, make sure you give a thumbs up. If you have any questions, just drop a comment below and I'll get back to you shortly. Thank you.